Wow, three videos in a row where you get to hear my dumb voice for a while. Not to worry, after this it's back to ranting about the weather and... <laughs> now, on to the topic at hand. Legendary. Well, one tiny thing before I get to the topic at hand. I'm recording this mid-edit because I got recommended a video that covers some of the points in this video. It's by Emperor Cubone, and he goes more into the topic of legendaries and their significance over time and the abundance of them. If you want to check it out, it's in the description. I'm kind of glad it got recommended. I don't want to be accused of stealing video ideas. Anyway, Man. resuming video. Legendaries. You know them. I am one, and they're just an eight-digit code away. I'm going to try to not turn this into a back-in-my-day kind of thing, but it'll probably still bleed in here and there. Anywho, let's recap how legendaries were implemented into the games. Gen 1s were completely optional in areas you wouldn't normally explore, like the Ice Cave or the Power Plant east of Lavender Town. Gen 2 introduced box art legends, whom were integral to the plot. And possibly the worst kind of legendary, Roamers. Ugh. Gen 3 introduced the third legendary that foreshadowed its importance in a later release, like Platinum, Emerald, and Black 2 and White 2. No, Suicune doesn't count. That was an extra in the Roamers and they just needed to make a third version like Yellow. Gen 4 introduced... Um... God? <laughs> Gen 5 introduced bringing two legendaries together to get the third in a trio. A good example being the Genies because you have to get Thunderous or Tornadus together so that you can, you know, get Landorus. Gen 6 didn't introduce anything. If it did, leave a comment telling me how inept I am. Gen 8 introduced DLC, and Gen 7 introduced what the video is about. It introduced convenience, and thus greatly lessened the importance of legendaries. However, before I get into that, let Grandpa Groudon quickly tell you how he got into Pokemon. I hated it as a kid, found a copy of Alpha Sapphire at a coffee shop, returned it to the owner, got curious, and purchased Omega Ruby because it looked cooler. I then played it for years, exploring the region and battling through the maze on. After finishing, I went back and played the older games, and you get the idea. My favorite part of Omega Ruby was searching every nook and cranny of Hoenn to see if there was something I missed. Or a new Mirage Island showed up. Now, I did look up how to get some of the legendaries because some are kind of cryptic. What Game Freak did for Oras's legendary quest is frankly underappreciated. The only criticism I have of it is I wish after you got all the legends you could catch Hoopa as a reward. You know, just something a little tap it on top. Initially I was gonna go over all the legendaries, but you know, going over all legendary locations in Oras is, you know, ridiculous. So I'm going over my four favorites. It's kind of disappointing how lazy Game Freak has gotten. And you all know that. They, they, they really just don't care at this point. I mean, they outsourced the Gen 4 remake so they could shut the fan base up. And before that, they had a subsection of their own company make the DLC for Gen 8 and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Oop, got off topic. First example is Lugia and ho -Oh. Who would have guessed that the Sea Mavo would have been more than a glorified TM location? Of course, I had Omega Ruby, so I had ho -Oh. So when I got the feather, I searched all over the ship before going onto the bow where the ring was. Initially... I didn't think that the portal would be exactly where the thing was, but I got stupid. Same kind of thing in Alpha Sapphire with Lugia down in the depths of the ship, so it's a really cool set piece now. Second is Heatran. Why would you ever explore a random cave that had no significance in the originals? In fact, I don't even think it was in the originals. They managed to make almost everything important in Oras. Cresselia I stumbled upon by accident because I was excited to see what Pokemon that day's Mirage Island would bring. And lastly, wow, I just realized I'm favoring the Gen 4 Legends, is the Lake Trio and the Creation Trio. I know I'm lumping them together, but hear me out. Not only do you have to catch the members of the Lake Trio at a different time of the day, including a one hour window for Yuxi, you then have to put them in your party and fly over a town with a rift over it in order to get Dialga or Palkia, then you have to go do it again for the other version of Oras you don't have to get the other member of the Creation Trio to ultimately have Dialga and Palkia in your party so you can get Giratina in the exact same place you got them. <gasps> oh, RCS, I love the Legend Quest in Oras. And yes, I am totally biased. It technically started in Fire Red and Leaf Green, but it really became prominent in Soul Silver, Heart Gold, and then Black 2 and White 2. They really put in effort with these legendaries. Now, how does the next generation Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon handle legendaries? Does it A. Have them all over the region in interesting places, like with Zygarde? Or B. Did they put in a dumb minigame that randomly gives you a legend based off of a colored portal, which doesn't guarantee a legend to its B? 
At least they kept the had the two members of the trio thing from Gen 5. Then Gen 8 ruins it by leaving all legendaries to random chance. From having to track down a powerful being in a fun quest to fighting three Pokemon that are big. It's kind of sad how the word legendary has no meaning in Pokemon anymore. Now anyone can have any legendary with patience and no effort. Legend Arceus is a step in the right direction, however, so there's some hope for the future. But this is Game Freak, so I'm skeptical they can pull it off. Whew, if you stuck it out to the end, I thank you for listening to my long ramble about something I'm frustrated at. Uh, I hope I made it entertaining enough for y'all. If I made at least one of you smile while watching, that's good enough for me. Anyway, that's it for now. Like and sub or I'll conveniently ignore Kyogre's next flood. Heh <laughs> heh.